Hello everyone. I hope you are all fine and you can hear me well. Everything is good. So tonight we are in English on my Twitch Sparkle session, uh, which is unusual. Uh, I'm usually doing Sparkle in French every Tuesday on this Twitch channel. Uh, the session is recorded and um, the video are stored on uh, YouTube later. I'm a bit late, but they come to YouTube at one point. And tonight we are in English because um, this session is part of the Wikidata 2022 reuse, uh, reuse day, data reuse day. So tonight I will focus a little bit on uh, once you get results on the Wikidata endpoint interface, you are in HTML and most of the time that's fine, but sometimes you want to reuse it um, in some other uh, environment, software, language, whatever. And we'll see that there's button and functionality in the interface that can help doing that. And uh, since I know quite well, I'm almost an expert in Sparkle, so I can talk alone about it. But to help me tonight, I ask uh, Luca Werkmeister to join me. Um, Luca, if you want to introduce yourself, you're on screen. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Lucas, um, also known as Wikidata Facts on Twitter. I've been writing Sparkle queries for a while. And I'm also, uh, since 2017 now, a software developer on the Wikidata team at Wikimedia Germany. Um, yeah, that's me, I guess. Yeah, that's, and you have a session uh, in two hours. Yeah, that's right. Showing how to build a simple web app using Wikidata data, including, but not limited to the query service. Exactly, so it will be a nice, uh, continuation and transition after what we will say tonight. So that's it. Um, for everyone, if you have a Twitch account, you can directly write in the chat. There's no problem. I will be following it and answering the question as much as I can. And uh, for the people who don't have a Twitch account, uh, you don't have to create one. You can do as you want. There's a etherpad. Uh, that I linked, and uh, I can link it again later. Uh, you can freely ask questions there, and you can also see some of the older questions there. So that's it, and we will go on the direct screen. Up, I'm lost. Too many, too many tabs. Like that. So. Um, this is the endpoint uh, of uh, Sparkle for Wikidata, the Wikidata query service, um, which is where the magic happens. You can write here in this windows um, a Sparkle query. I will show some simple Sparkle query and you have example. You can also, and I will do that immediately, change the language. Uh, right now I'm in French, obviously, but I will switch in English exactly or again in the chat has the same idea as me. So most of the time, and most of the time is what I do at least, uh, I write a query and I read the results uh, directly in HTML. And it's good for most of the purposes. You don't need more. But uh, sometimes you did, do need more. And I will, after showing some simple queries, some answering some questions if you have, uh, uh, we will see all the other functionality. Uh, something that I will not talk about tonight, but which is very good, there's the query builder that can help you build the query. Uh, the previous session with uh, Lydia, they talk a bit about it. It's there, you can go there if you want. There's also an help button with a uh, help portal and um, request a query button here, where you can ask to real human, oh, I have an ID, but I don't know how to do a query. So you can go there and at the bottom, you ask your question and some people, some nice people, hopefully will answer it. So here it is. 
Um, there's a lot of other things, GIF feedbacks, some licensing information, the data, RDF model and the Sparkle specification. I will not talk about it tonight. So a query is always more or less the same, but it always starts with a select for what you want to select and display as the result. You can see each variable as a colon in the results. Um, and there's the where condition where you specify exactly what you want to assign to each variable, how they work, or you can filter and everything. And actually, you don't know, need to know everything, uh, and I don't know everything. So you can start typing, for instance, select. I don't type all the word, and you can do control space, and some autocomplete is nice here to help you to remember, oh, that work this way or this way. So, for instance, here is the basic structure you see most of the time. And uh, select where. Uh, yes, uh, Sharon Kav, this video is recorded right now and it will be available on my channel uh, on YouTube and maybe, probably, on Wikimedia Deutschland channel also. Maybe, or again, you can confirm that in the chat. So, select. And if I put just a star, it's with select everything and where and where can be, for instance, I want all item that are instance of. So I put a prefix WDT uh, instance of. Again, I don't need to know it by earth. There's P31 instance of bears because I like bears. There's large carnivore mammal. And you see that when you start typing, it starts to Try to autocomplete, and there's very various results. Some which is a bit strange. I'm not sure why they are showing here. It must be in alias. Uh, but I want bears, the large carnival mammal, RCD. That's the one. And I can click on the button here, or I can uh, use the shorter shortcut, uh, Control Enter. And I see that, oh, there's only three bears in Wikidata. Oh, that's a shame. And by default, you see that the results are tabular, and it gives only the Q identifiers. If I want uh, the label uh, in English, for instance, I can once again start typing, select Wikibase label, this one. And then here, I need to put item and specify explicitly that I want item label, and maybe also item description, for instance. And um, this variable, it doesn't exist in my code here. Well, it doesn't show up, at least. But because the wiki, Wikibase service label um, builds them for you. So if I relaunch control space, it runs the query. And you see that here are the three bears. We are that V, a bear in Turkey. Uh, one that has doesn't have a name in English, so in that case, it's not possible to show anything, so it's just showing the regular Q identifier, the numbers. <coughs> and there's a third bear, a grizzly bear, who died in... Uh, which was gifted to the UK monarch, king. Oh, nice. Um, sad for him, but okay, nice. Um, it's a good equation to to say that, oh, there's only three bears in Wikidata. Is my query correct or not? Um, and the query is correct in the sense that it gives you what you ask. But uh, sometimes it's not just a bear, but could be a brown bear, for instance. Uh, species of mammal, brown bear. It should be this one, if I'm OK. And you see that there's another result. So, Sometimes bear and bear is not exactly what you think. It can be a polar bear, brown bear, a grizzly, whatever, Kodiak bear, or, or everything. So you need to know exactly what you want. Uh, you need to think about it in Sparkle. So that's why when you do Sparkle, you need to know at least a bit how Wikidata works, how the data is stored, what is the right property for something, what is the right value. Um, and so on. Um, that's it for the basics. Um, here I only have one um, 
one condition, one line, but I can add more. For instance, does that bear as a birth date? For instance, date of birth, and I put uh, birth date. Uh, I'm not sure this bear. Does this bear as a birth date? Will it show result or not? I can check before. So Pyrrhos is a bear from the Pyrenees in French. Uh, again, I, in French, sorry. Uh, English, like this. And this bear has a date of birth. So that's okay. I can do that. And if I relaunch it, you see that. Um, oh, and this is a mistake that I make very often. I add the condition here, but I forgot to select it. So it calculates, but it doesn't show. Yeah, birth date. And you can add as many things you want. Uh, for instance, what do I have here? Uh, place of birth, for instance. Where is this item? Place of birth. Again, if I want, I need to put it here. And if I don't want just the identifier, but also the label, I can put it like that. And you see that you have Pyrrhus uh, in the 8088, place of birth, Slovenia. I can add as many things as I want. Um, as you may notice already, it's always uh, what we call a triple uh, or triplet. Uh, it's always you can see this as a subject verb complement, um, but in Sparkle we call it a subject predicate object. Um, and always go by three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you can add as many as you want, but it's always be by three. Um, and here it's the property in Wikidata, so it's what is here. And here you can ever specify a specific value, a fixed value, or you can put a variable if you don't know what you want. Uh, not yet. It's what you want to, to find. Um, it's basically the values here. And the result will be the items themselves. Um, you can add as many things as you want. And, uh, by default, if I add them like that, it's additive, it's cumulative. You put more and more, more conditions and um, so you have less and less results. Yeah, there was only one result at the start, but if you start with a big data set, you will have less and less. Um, you can also, uh, yeah. I think if we change the property, actually we will get more results because I looked at one bear that's well known in German and it's not an instance of brown bear, but it has a statement is an individual of taxon brown bear, which is the property P10,241, um, ah. and I think if we use that instead of P31, then we might get more bears. I haven't tried it yet, but someone relatively recently uh, started a migration from one property to the other. I'm not sure if it, all the discussion is completed yet. Yes, that's a good point. So you say taxon? It's an individual of taxon. Ah is an individual of taxon okay so that's very good point and it can allow me to show something else but if i don't want to execute these two lines i can just put a um, sharp sign this sign um, and we put it in comment and not execute them so i can start with just this one and i have 16 results oh yes and i have I know these bears, GG2, M13, that's bears in the Alpine arc, more or less. Yeah, so. JJ1 is the one I was thinking of, Bruno. Oh, I know this bear too. Yeah, that's okay. That's why there, there was so little. And I can uncommon bin, so right now there's 16. If I want all of them who also have a birth date, there will be probably a bit less, 11. Or it could be more if one bear has multiple birth dates for some reason, because we are not sure, because different references give different results. Sometimes it's a bit more, but it's usually 
Ujrazi is less. If I uncomment place of birth, you see there's only seven. But maybe I want the bears, whether they have or not. I want it to be optional. So this is something you can do, but you need to explicitly ask for it. So it's optional like this. And for each statement, uh, each line, I need to put optional like that. So here I have 16 again. And I have some line with birth date and some with no birth date. It's empty. Because as I said, by default, it's cumulative. And in the end, in your table at the result, if you don't put optional, all the colon are always filled. There's no empty case uh, in that case. So that's why you need to put optional. Um, and if you want, for instance, if you want to correct them, and you want all of them without the place of birth, instead of optional, you can just put minus. And here I have only eight results, and here the colon are always empty because these bear don't have a place of birth. And this one, M33, GG2, are most likely born in Switzerland, so I can at least put that. Um, I will check it later. Um, that's it for the basic. There's a lot, like really a lot of more possibility. You can do filter uh, for only the one born after or before one date or between two dates or whatever you want. Uh, Sparkle is a very powerful language. Um, if you want to know more and everything about it, you can do, go to the Sparkle specification themselves. There's a lot of things there. Uh, just to show you a lot of possibility, you can uh, a lot of function on strings. If you want all the bears where the name start with uh, two letters followed by numbers, and you know that that's some specific bears, you can look at things like that, for instance. Um, I will not do that today, except if someone asks me in the chat. Uh, what I can show is the examples here. You see that there's a lot of examples which are still in French for some reason. OK, probably looking at my interface uh, on, on my browser. Anyway, then you have, uh, so this one is cats, with this one is goats, this one is horses, because we like animals in Wikidata for some reason. And you have some lot of examples. You have cat with images, for instance. And you see that there's some codes uh, like that to say, oh, I don't want a tabular result, but I want um, an image grid. That's some nice picture of cats if you want to. And there's a lot of example uh, about what you can do, uh, what type of uh, data visualization, how you want to show the result, uh, some suggestion of property. And you see that P31, that's why I, I started directly with P31, because I'm used to it. But you see that there's a lot of other property. Um, you can type coordinates, for instance, here. Also, and we show all um, example with coordinates. Um, city linked to the Trans-Mongolian and the Trans-Siberian railway. Oh, that's nice. And it will be on the map. Mm, that's nice also. Uh, I love maps, so that's it. You see a map of cities, and each city, if you click on it, you see it's a city, um, Ulaanbaatar, Ulaanbaatar, in, for some reason, in English. And if I click on it, I can go back to um, Wikipedia data, and if you don't know it, Ulaanbaatar is the capital of Mongolia, and you have more information. Yadi yadi yada. And that's it. And that's how most people, I think, I don't know if we have statistics about how many people use the query service directly on HTML or not. Do you know that? Uh, probably exists somewhere, but I don't know where. OK. Um, I'm guessing most people, uh, maybe not in volume, but at least in number of people are using it just like that. And it solves most of the problem, so that's good. But you have other way to use it. Uh, there's some button in the interface that we often forgot. 
But here, for instance, I got the result on a map that I can see directly. But I can also download it as a JSON file, TSV file, CSV, or HTML table, or even a SVG image for some case. It does not always work, but sometimes it's depending on what you are querying and what type. Yeah, I think for a map, that's not going to work. Yeah, for a map, it's not going to work. But for some uh, uh, diagram, um, I've always forgot what are the possibilities, but you have line chart, bar chart, scatter chart, area chart, bubble chart. I think this one are going out as SVG. And you see here it's grayed because it's not the compatible data to be a bar chart. It doesn't make sense, so it's not an option. Um, but you can download it. And for instance, for coordinates and for maps, I often um, download it and put it in an over, um, um, over software, over things. I, I like uh, Kepler.gl, for instance, which is very good and much better uh, to do maps and nice maps. Uh, because the query service can do some visualization, it's it's nice with you. It offers this possibility. But if you want to fine tune every parameter to have exactly the color you want and everything, it's kind of possible inside Sparkle. But it needs a lot of code, and it's not always made for it. And you have specific uh, software for doing maps, for instance, that are much better. So don't waste too much time doing it. Inside Sparkle directly, you can reuse the data uh, in other software. So that's why it's important to download it. And you can ever download it as a file on your computer. So you can save it, reuse it later as you want. But you can also share a link or use this link uh, in other software directly. So you have obviously the short um, URL to results. I can take and share in the chat if you want to look at it. Um, this one is the short URL to the result itself. So if you click in the link I put in the chat, you don't see the query up front. You see only the result. It will show exactly like this. Take some time for some reason. Rendering. OK, that's work. And you see you don't have the code anymore. So that could be better to share that. But if you click ever here at the bottom on Wikidata Query Service, or here there's a, something that appears, you can edit the Sparkle and go back to a Sparkle query exactly where I was before. Um, that's all good. And if you want to share specifically just the query, the code of the query itself, you have also here a showing link here for the same thing, but without the result. So you need to run it by yourself. So for instance, if you share on Twitter, you're more likely to share the results because, oh, that's nice and wow. And if you want to share on uh, project chat on, with some other Wikidatian and you want, oh, um, whatever, you want to show the code itself, you use more this one. Um, Asharazan is asking, I was not listing when you built this query, what is it, Marco Polo journey? Um, could be, but it's not. It's the uh, city linked uh, by the Trans Mongolian and the Trans Librarian. And actually, um, a useful pro tip I can put it is that instead of just putting a comment, you can put it in a, uh, in uh, with a title uh, prefix here. Uh, instead of this, I will put cities linked uh, linked by linked to. The Transmongolian, I'm not sure of my English here. Transsiberian, I guess. Something like that. Transmongolian, not Transmongolian, like that. And if you run this query, you see the same results. But here at the top, you will have the explanation. So it's way better. And if you don't know Sparkle, you don't have to analyze the code to know, oh, what is it? You can see it directly there. And that's it. Um, and then, because today is the Wikidata Reuse Day, and because a lot of other sessions will 
assume you'll know at least a bit uh, how Sparkle works. Uh, that's why I did this introduction, but I will start to show some uh, some tools, um, some bricks that can be useful later. Um, here in the links, you have also the link to uh, Sparkle endpoint, and you can also embed result. If you click on it, you have an iframe that you can use in um, uh, in any HTML web page. If I extend that, you see a more bit of the code. It's if you know HTML, you know you probably understand what you're seeing here. It's oh, I need to extend it more because I don't see it fully here like that. Okay, and you see that's iframe. You have the width and the height, and you can choose how to display it. And there's a query service um, result. So if you integrate that in your website. And that something is changed, uh, improved, hopefully, but sometimes vandalized in Wikidata. It will also directly uh, on the fly uh, change on your website. So could be nice uh, or not, depending on what is your use case. But that's a possibility, um, which I find nice. But some people are using, I know that some um, archive in Switzerland are doing that on their website to show oh where are the archives in Switzerland and things like that. Uh, that's nice. Um, and the third button here is where the thing are getting more technical. Um, it's called code and it shows you code um, of the query and how it can be reused in other languages. You see the basic uh, URL. Uh, query data directly, uh, which is linked to the interface in the query service. Uh, you see HTML, which is again the iframe like we saw just before. Another way to get the same thing. Um, Wikilink, uh, it's again the same, but just for lazy Wikidatian, there's just a link here to, to write it in uh, Wikicode. Inside the wiki data wiki page, wiki data, Wikipedia, whatever, and then you have a lot of languages, uh, some that you may know or not, but probably your favorite language is somewhere there. PHP, uh, JavaScript, uh, jQuery or modern, Java, Perl, Python, Python with the library uh, PyWikiBot, which is um, the best library I would say for editing or interfacing with a Wikimedia project. Uh, Ruby, that I don't know at all, but I know it's a language. R, which is more for statistical purpose, and MATLAB, which is also um, more for mathematics, like you'd say, for, the, for instance, doing data visualization. Um, um, if you want nice uh, 3D uh, pie chart or something, whatever. R and MATLAB are here for you. And the last one is Listeria, uh, which is for uh, inside Wikimedia project also to display um, with uh, this uh, template Wikidata list, um, uh, which is very specific, but it's right and the wiki code is right and here for you. Um, I don't know if some people here have some preferred language. We can see some just to see it. Um, some, for instance, PHP, and you see you directly have the code and everything, and you have all the, uh, the public function and everything to call it for you. And you see that some point in, inside it, for instance, here, you see the Sparkle uh, endpoint and the Sparkle query is there. Um, so you don't have to rewrite all the code and all the, the part around it. Uh, it's done for you. Uh, I don't know a lot of PHP, I know more Python, for instance, and I guess, Luca, you will talk about Python later, and you see again, yeah. um, I don't know if there's any comments you want to do around this, um, it's just Python uh, code. Yeah. The nice part, it's, it's writing most of the code for you, so you can write everything around letter over function. You can do a sub function or whatever. And you see that 
it's often importing uh, specific uh, library or tools. Uh, for instance, I don't know this one, Sparkle Wrapper. Uh, if you go in Python PyWikiBot, you have import PyWikiBot and using PyWikiBot. Uh, the same in R, I know that uh, there's a Sparkle library. And it's not the only way to do it. I know, for instance, in, in R, there's at least two other libraries that can do more or less si similar things. Uh, one is called uh, Sparkle Wikidata, I guess. Uh, there's another one, uh, Wikidata R, I think, that you can write um, as you want. But this one should work at least. Um, and we can say it's the more recommended way to do it. Um, and that's for most of it. I don't know if in the chat you have any question. Feel free to ask them. Um, oh, I see a lot of question. Um, or oh, people taking notes. There's not a question yet in the effort pad. Um, about the tax and everything. Perfect. Thank you. Probably Leah, I guess, is taking notes. Um, Whoever is writing notes anonymously, thanks. It's not Leah, actually. Um, that's it. Um, the nice part for me to, to see this code is that it's, uh, I'm always getting confused in things like, oh, there's three quotes here, for instance. I, I'm always, oh, why is there three, two quotes? I'm always confused. And you see that the code is written for you. I see that uh, Ellen in the chat say, oh, nice Listeria syntax. This one, for instance, if you are not sure what this syntax or this part of the syntax mean, uh, at least it's a good start. You know, this one is working and that you, you can reuse it later. Uh, if you are not totally comfortable ever in the language you are using or in Sparkle, um, I would say it's a very good start. And for some reason, I'm not sure why, but in PyWeekend one, there's no syntax color, but for other tools, you can see here that there's color. Um, so you see more easily what is what and how it works. And you see that some parts, that's what I wanted to say also, uh, you see that there's a comment here, to do, adjust user, see. And uh, I think Lydia talked about it, or maybe it was Thomas, uh, I forgot, Tom, just before. Uh, I think it's the uh, etiquette user agent policy, okay. Um, and this is required, so if you don't uh, change that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Lucas, but it does not work. Uh, well, in the code examples, we've already put a custom user agent that says this is from the Query service examples, and so it's going to work at least, but you should still change it um, because if we see a lot of requests with the uh, user agent that is supposed to be just for this example code, then we'll probably get angry. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, if, I think for Python specifically, the default user agent is completely blocked. Otherwise, um, it will work at first, but you might have a low rate limit if you don't have a custom user agent, or you might get blocked at some point if you don't send, if you send too many requests. Yeah, obviously. That's why I had the question just before on who is using it? Do we have statistic? And indeed, that's something that needs to be mentioned that sometimes there's a lot of people trying to do a lot of things at the same time and it causes problems. So that's why there's this new policy of um, indicating the user agent. And it's very important to put it. And uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea, but I also recommend to put some comments in your query um, of what you are doing and why. And you can even uh, put uh, some code like, uh, that's not possible to write directly here, but you can write here. Uh, or for Nicolas Vigneron, for instance. 2022, something like that. Um, at least it's useful for yourself. Um, so you know, oh, this code worked 
in uh, in March 2022. Um, and for statistic purpose, I'm not sure if the team is really looking at it, but maybe for some strange case, it could be useful for them um, to see things like that. Uh, it's quite important to be respectful of the query service, please. Um, and if you share the code on some platform like GitHub or things like that, uh, I know I use a lot of uh, looking at other people writing query in uh, uh, GitLab or GitHub, for instance. And I like when I see things directly in the query because it helped me knowing what it is, what it's down, uh, who did it when, um, and some time for old queries, you know that something changed, like the brown bear, it's not P31 anymore, it's another property. And uh, it's good to see, oh, but that was back then, so that's why it's not working anymore, I need to change this or that. Um, okay. Yeah, I also have a lot of browser tests still open um, with comments like, I wrote this query in August 2021, and here's why I never tweeted it, and maybe I'll come across it again at some point. So yeah, comments, even to yourself, are definitely useful. Yeah, always comment if you can. And it's useful to put it here, but you can put uh, comments at the end of the line and say, for instance, if you are a starter in Python, um, not in Python, in Sparkle, sorry, um, you can say, for example, uh, this line is to retrieve coordinates. Or uh, you can say here, for instance, change this line um, if you want over right ways, for instance. And uh, when you, even if you are an expert at Sparkle, uh, it's always useful to say to see small comments like that, some little clue. And the next time you can directly find which part you want to change because this one is still. 11 line, but some Sparkle query can be very, very long. I'm not sure. Um, mountain, Italian mountain over 4,000. You see this one is a bit longer and uh, it can be very complicated. So, oh, you see, oh, that was a good example actually, because this one does a, 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 something a bit exotic and a bit unusual. It uses the PSN prefix um, I'm not using it very often, so sometimes I forgot, oh, what is PSN for? And you see here, there's, there's a comment, oh, that's for normalized 8. So at least I know it directly, more directly, and I can, you can be more efficient and win more time. And you can say, oh, this one is for, for coordinates, this one, Q41 is Italy. Uh, things like that, and if you want to change the query and say, oh, I don't want Italy, but I want Switzerland, Switzerland, which is 39 and 8, Switzerland, did I write it right? Yes, uh, and it's good. Um, so, yeah, always put comment. Um, Okay, in the policy we have some example if you want, that's good. Uh, maybe not very useful here. Oh, that's a new image wheel. I forgot about that. Okay, that's, that's nice. Um, talk about a the language. Right yeah, thanks. I, I was waiting for a question. So this one does not have auto language. Um, this is a special function in the Wikibase label service. Uh, if I take back the, the first one, we'll take the cats again. You see here that there's an auto language. And if I'm not mistaken, auto language is the language of the browser or is it of the interface here? I think it's of the interface here. I think so, but. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but um, here I mean, we can just test actually. We can put it in uh, Spanish, for instance. 
And if I run it, I say, give me, and what is important here is that you can put one value, uh, just auto language. You can put just, oh, I want it in English. I want it in French. But you can say also, I want in French, in English, or in French, if you don't have English, or in Italian, if you don't have French. So you can put several values, and the first one is the one who will show up. And if I put just auto language back here, and I'm interfacing Spanish, but my browser is in French right now. <coughs> and I have no idea if it's Spanish or not. So item description, as it works both for label and description. Yeah, it works. Gato Domestico, so you have it in the language chosen here. In a yeah, yeah, yeah. A comma English, you see that uh, Kisu Misu, for instance, here has no thing. I will put Japanese also. And you see some uh, in. Uh, uh, Spanish, we chose Espanol. Uh, some are in English because it didn't find there is not yet, at least, uh, a description in English, uh, in Spanish, so it gives a second choice and maybe we'll see some results somewhere. No, there's no result, um, but Sometimes you have other language that show up when you I should not put English actually um, or Japanese. So here it tries first Spanish. If there's no Spanish, then Japanese. Then if there's still no Spanish, Chinese. So you see here paddles um, is in uh, Japanese and Peter and Peter 2 are in uh, Chinese for some reason. And I know that this one is, says cat in Chinese. That's all I know. OK. Um, um, oh, there's a new viewer, Ada Fede. Welcome to my Twitch session. Uh, would it be ever better to put all value Italy search as values at the beginning, like the other code um, variable on the top, so it's easier to change without buzzing the word query? Uh, that's a very relevant question. Thank you for asking. And you are totally right. Um, oh, I would say it depends. If it appears, I will go back to English and I will. Uh, what was it? Uh, Trans Siberian. City linked. Um, here you see there was values. And this is um, a good way to do it if you have several values like that. You want both on the Transmongolian highway and on the Trans-Siberian. So if you have several values, clearly you need to use values. Or if you have the same highway that appears several times, and you don't want to change it every time, uh, values is a good choice also. But if you have a simple query, like it was for the mountain in one country, uh, Switzerland was it, uh, it could be directly in the code. But if you want to build uh, more code around it, more things later. It's a good idea to put it um, as value. And um, here maybe Lucas will help me because I'm not sure how to, you do it. But um, if you are in Python, you can ever uh, put it somewhere in the code. Um, so you can pass this variable directly in your code. Um, yeah. Uh, like on line 19, we see that with the user agent, where it's this format string slash percent s dot percent s, and then the version number gets formatted into there. And you could use this Python percent syntax um, in the same way to put an item ID into the query itself. And actually, Python has, I think, at least three, if not four, uh, ways to format a string. So maybe that's a bit confusing, but this is one way to do it and then uh, you could do it in different ways in other languages i guess yeah and you can do it for instance here your query is cat but you can change it here 
and do the same thing and pass something. Uh, I know that in PHP, was it by? No, I don't remember. But somewhere there was an example that I remember where it was nicely done. Um, so in this case, if you want to pass it from your code to the query or from the query to the code, whatever, um, it's good. It's better to use value. So thanks for the question. That was a very good question. Um, if there's other question, I will go back also to the etherpad. Um, no, there's no question. We will end up a bit early to leave time to people to go back to the Jitsi. I forgot what is just next. I think it's Lydia. I think best practices for reusing Wikidata's data. Yes, yeah, something like that, but I will check to not say anything wrong. So we are here, Wikidata Query Service Introduction. I hope you liked it and give you some pointers, at least, of what you can do and how. And yes, just after is Lydia for best practice for reusing Wikidata's data. Uh, after various ways. So that was the session just before mine, but Mine was also one way to do it. Um, she will talk about the do's and don'ts, uh, how to do the thing the best, uh, both for the sake of the community or uh, the charge on uh, on the server to not overcharge them, but also for yourself uh, to have efficient code that run pretty quickly and efficiently and nicely and doesn't get blocked because you forgot a user agent or things like that. Uh, so if you want to build some tools someday in the future, uh, I highly recommend to go to see Lydia. And exactly, it will be on GTC again, like the one before. Twitch was uh, the exception. Yeah. And, um, that's it. I don't know if there's last question. We can go back on the screen with Luca, like that. Um, thanks for everyone who joined. Uh, 25 people, yay! What's and yeah, on GT you have reaction. Clap, clap, clap. You can do it. Not... Yeah, they even make noise at you. <laughs> yay! Um... Um, I think we can probably stop here. Um, thanks again, Lucas, for being here. Thank you. That's um, nice. Clap, clap, clap. Oh, oh, Rodrigo is here from the sense. Welcome. Nice to see you here. We can do something about Lexem one day, probably. That's good. Um, I can't read GT, not from Twitch, but it will be a virtual read. I you, urge you to go. You still uh, only to say that you're coming from this Twitch channel. Yeah, exactly. Um, and as a last word, uh, I will be back uh, next week, same day, same time. Uh, and I will talk about uh, Open Refine with um, Sandra Fauconnier. Um, who is now in charge of Open Refine, I think. Oh, very I think nice. Um, yeah. At least she works with Open Refine, uh, especially on the project uh, Open Refine and uh, Wikimedia Commons, structured data on Wikimedia Commons, which will come in the next month. But uh, again, since this is the Wikidata Reuse Day, I will talk about um, how you can use um, OpenRefine to reuse data and do things. And I think I said everything now. Um, yes, if I forgot something, I'm sure other people. Golden hour session. OK. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, bye and see you later. I will be on the GTC if you have further questions. Don't uh, hesitate. And yes, you can contact me on Twitter, uh, username Blet, which is the same as here in Twitch, or directly uh, my username on Wikidata is Vigneron. 
and feel free to ask further questions or to use the etherpad uh, i look at it at least once a week so feel free to use it and that's all for tonight thank you everyone right. see you in 10 minutes on jitsi bye see you.